a welcome in or a welcome back. It's a monkey mar. Before we get into today's video, please make sure you click that subscribe button, the bell for notifications, and of course, the like. I am not sure if you know the story of Trenton Duckett. He was a two-year-old boy that was taken from his bedroom, supposedly through the window, in 2006. They have some new news on this story, and I think I am going to go ahead and cover it and dig into it and see what I can find. So... This was posted on October 9th of 2020 out of Lake County, Florida. A family is still fighting for answers 14 years after the disappearance of a two-year-old boy in Lake County, Florida. His mother reported two-year-old Trenton Duckett missing from his Leesburg home, never to be seen again. And this story has just so many twists and turns and you'll see if you do not know the story what I'm talking about. So investigators with Leesburg police are now following up on a new tip that is given this family renewed hope that one day we may finally know what happened to Trenton Duckett. What we need to know. Investigators found a cut in screen of child's bedroom window his mother melinda took her own life leesburg police won't reveal details about the new tip in case grandmother said she believes he will be found on the walls of the eubank home outside buffalo new york is a story mindy made this when she was in fourth grade beth eubank said the story is about a mother and a grandmother, Beth Eubank. What the pictures on the walls won't tell you is a family story shrouded in darkness. I will never give up looking for him, Beth Eubank said. Her family's word unraveled in an instant 14 years ago. He was two years old when he was taken, Eubank said. He doesn't know he's missing. Her adoptive daughter's son, Trenton Duckett, disappeared. So Melinda was adopted by Beth Eubank. In the years following Duckett's disappearance, Eubank and her husband, Trenton's grandfather, have become heavily involved with the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children. The organization is geared toward helping children reported missing find their way home and serve as a support group for families. Her former son-in-law, Joshua Duckett, who is his father, lives 1,100 miles away and has found his own path forward. The biggest thing is to keep fighting for the cause to bring him home, Josh Duckett said. Shortly after losing his son, tragedy struck again. I was 20 years old, and the girl I dated all the way through high school, had a kid with, was married to, and lived with, had just committed suicide, Josh Duckett said. Joshua's wife, Melinda, also Beth's daughter, took her own life. She loved Trenton very much, Beth Eubank said. She was not the monster the media smashed and bashed out to be. The questions have followed. Why did this happen and who's responsible have not yet been answered. The story starts back in August 2006 with a 911 call. The operator, how long has he been gone? Melinda, I don't know. The operator, you don't know? Melinda, I don't know. I was watching a movie that was two hours long. Melinda Duckett reported her son missing from their Leesburg apartment. Investigators found they cut in the screen of Trenton's bedroom window. Questions lingered, adding to the mystery. What happened to Trenton? Was his mother holding the answers? I don't feel she had anything to do with his abduction, Beth Eubank said. I don't think she did anything to him. I think he is out there somewhere. Now, a new tip gives fresh hope for the family of resolving the mystery. A person who lived in that area at the time Trenton went missing has come forward with new information, Captain Joe Losey with Leesburg Police 
would not disclose details but said time in this case may prove helpful. There has been a lot of technological advances in investigative work to date, Losey said, advances that Joshua and Beth hope will help uncover an unturned stone and bring Trenton back home. We are not going to give up hope, and we hope that nobody else does either, Josh Duckett said. We will bring Trenton home someday, Beth Eubank said. Leesburg police released an age progression photo of what Trenton may look like today. Anyone with information that may help solve this case is asked to call 352-787-2121, and that number will be below in the description. This case is really, really deep. So, Duckett, Melinda Duckett suicide note. After my baby is found, I would not be a good mother. So, this was actually posted from the Daily Sun on September 27th, 2006 out of Leesburg. Leesburg Police Tuesday released two more suicide notes apparently left by Melinda Duckett addressed to her parents and grandparents. The note reveals a little about what, if anything, Melinda may have known about the August 27th disappearance of her two-year-old son, Trenton Duckett. The main reason I'm doing this is because after my baby is found, I would not be a good mother, Melinda wrote in the note to her grandparents. With two jobs and full-time school, I tried my hardest but always slacked in some area. Trenton should have had my full attention at all times. I'm sorry. In a postscript to the note to her grandparents, Melinda wrote that she had left something in the ashtray of the car. Leesburg police identified that object as an undisclosed amount of cash. In the note to her parents, Melinda thanked them for giving her emotional support and asked that they not take her suicide personally. While police collected numerous pieces of writing from Melinda Duckett's car and apartment following her September 8 suicide, police said the two notes released Tuesday had a previously released note addressed to the public were the only suicide notes that were found. We continue to follow up on leads as they come in, Leesburg Police Captain Ginny Paget said. In the addition to the release of the notes, Leesburg Police for the first time identified Danny Bass as the second man who spent the evening of August 27th with Melinda. Police had previously identified one of the men with Melinda that evening, the evening Trenton was reported missing as Chris Pierce. Trenton's father, Joshua Duckett, said Tuesday that he remains focused on finding his son. If the notes don't reference Trenton or anything about him, then they don't really mean anything to me, Josh Duckett said. Melinda Duckett told police she put Trenton to bed about 7 p.m. and on August 27th and discovered him missing two hours later. Melinda committed suicide on September 8th at her grandparents' home in the villages. Police have labeled their prime suspect in Trenton's disappearance, citing her vague account of her whereabouts before reporting him missing, among other pieces of evidence. And then we've got anyone with information regarding Trenton's disappearance, current whereabouts, and of course they wanted to know Melinda Duckett's whereabouts on the weekend of the 26th and the 27th, asked to call the FBI. Really, this story is a tragedy. It makes you wonder why she actually killed herself two weeks after Trenton went missing. And, I mean, just two weeks later, unless she took what she knew to the grave. But then to leave the um, suicide notes, you would think that she would have said something. Melinda Duckett, nay Ubank. August 14th, she was born 1985, and she committed suicide September 8th, 2006. She was the mother of Trenton John Duckett. She attracted media attention when she committed suicide following an appearance on Nancy Grace. Duckett's family filed a wrongful death claim against Nancy Grace and CNN, alleging that the aggressive questioning traumatized Duckett and led her to suicide. 
So she was born in South Korea, Melinda, and she moved to the United States on Christmas Eve of 1985 at the age of four months after being adopted by an American couple. She lived in Lockport, New York until she was 17 years old when she moved to Florida to live with her adoptive grandparents. She attended South Sumner High School with Joshua Duckett, who she began dating. Melinda became pregnant and gave birth to Trenton shortly after graduating high school. She and Joshua married in July 2005. The relationship between Josh and Melinda Duckett was tumultuous, and they separated numerous times before Melinda filed for divorce in July 2006. Melinda was involuntarily committed under the Baker Act in April 2005 after Joshua alleged that she had threatened to harm Trenton. So then she was diagnosed with obsessive compulsive personality disorder in December 2005, but the report indicated there was no psychological reason that would preclude Melinda from being a capable and loving parent. After doing a little researching, I found some a very interesting, interesting little pieces of articles and information on this case. Let's get into that a little bit and then I am going to do a part two. I am not sure how many of you actually know the story of Trenton Duckett. I did not know it is as deep as it is and after getting into a lot of research which i'm going to share a little with you right now fascinating it's just so i guess melinda and josh the parents of trenton had issues and from what i'm starting to understand his mother carla macero was against melinda so in February of 2006, Melinda was finally granted child support in the amount of $403 per month in May. Melinda was granted sole custody of Trenton by DCF, with Josh having standard visitations in June 2006. Melinda filed for divorce. That should have been the end of the nightmare of retaliation by Josh and his mother, Carla Macero against Melinda. So they go back and forth to where they keep harassing Melinda. And um, it says here that during the fall, Josh and Melinda had continual arguments, mostly about Josh's lack of responsibility toward Trenton and Melinda. More accusations by Josh, DCF again involved, Trenton bounced around foster care, the grandparents' home. So then, during the Christmas holidays, Kevin Macero was arrested for cocaine. Now, I am not sure how Kevin Macero is related to the mother, but maybe it's a boyfriend or a husband with the last name. I'm going to look into it. But Carla kicked him out, and then she takes in her new, yes, so he was a companion, her new companion, 26-year-old Jason Wayne Fort who also has a criminal history. So all the DCF court hearings that ensued during 2006, Carla was, so Carla was accompanied by Jason Fort. Melinda told her grandparents that she knew Jason as someone who used to ride dirt bikes with Josh. Yeah, this is deep. I mean, you just, you read and it just gets, so here, where was, so it goes into days prior to the abduction, and on August 12, two days after Trenton's birthday, Josh Duckett visited his father, James Duckett, who was on death row in a Florida state prison. I wonder what he did. They discussed the threatening MySpace email sent to Melinda from Josh. James advised his son that email could add up to a lot of time in prison. The porn video was mentioned by Josh to his dad during that visit as well. So Carla, the mother of Josh, and Josh is the father of Trenton, Melinda's ex-husband, are accusing or saying that Melinda 
was in a porn video. So here they go on, why would Josh visit his dad whom he had only seen one other time with Melinda? On that particular Saturday, wouldn't Josh have wanted to be on his bike or with his friends? Why the two hour trip to Stark with his uncle and then to discuss the email and the porn? And then how, why would James Duckett get a message to Melinda to not come and visit him on the 27th of August, the day Trenton was abducted. Then write her a letter stating how funny it was that he got his dates mixed up. I would think that a man in prison for 22 years would remember every single day. I'm going to read one more part of this and then I'm going to jump into another blog on this case and then I'm going to wrap it up and like I said earlier I am going to do a part two. So here the night of the 12th early on the 13th Sunday Melinda frantically called her friend Nicole Diaz and stated that she needed thousands of dollars because she wanted to keep she and Trenton safe from Josh Duckett. Was Josh threatening to release the porn video of him and Melinda? Oh, so it was a porn video between her and her husband. Well, I mean, not everyone does it, but you know, some people probably do make porn videos of a husband and wife team, you know, to each their own. Where was I? So was Josh threatening to release the porn video of him and Melinda and wanted money? Was Josh threatening to take Trenton and Melinda would never see Trenton again? At this time, Josh had a restraining order against him and he could not see Trenton. Why did Melinda need the money in days? Was Melinda going to use the money to have thugs talk some sense into Josh? But then why would there be a time limit unless something was going to happen if Melinda did not comply? Very interesting. This case is deep, and this is not even the top. This is like just the top layer of what goes on of another part that I was reading about a nephew of Carla's that was a police officer and he was arrested for child abuse or child molestation. I'm going to have to find that article again. And then, you know, let me just read this last part on the adoption. So, during the frantic search for Trenton, then realizing he had been kidnapped, Belinda called police friends for help while Danny Bass was calling 911. This was when Melinda called her ex-boyfriend John Lucas Brown, who was a deputy sheriff with the Sumner County Sheriff's Department. She asked the last name of Carla Macero's boyfriend because she was filling out the missing child report. He didn't know it at the time, but told her later. She wrote the name on the inside of an Orbit gum box. Something is not right with this case, and it gets deeper into a Korean gang as well. Yeah, this is definitely not a one video story. In part two, I want to touch on Melinda's suicide. I am going to go ahead and give a little preview of what we are going to run through. And ooh, a nasty picture. But that's it. There is a lot of weird and just crazy crazy information about her suicide and that is what we are going to get into in part two okay let's get into these men in Carla Macero's life real quick so this is the father of Josh the one in prison for life James Duckett and he's got first-degree murder or premeditated and then he's got a sexual battery by adult on a victim under 12. Death sentence and sentence to life. And he's been in prison since 1987. So this is winner number one. This is winner number two. Carla's Macero's husband. And this is... Kevin John Macero. So this was a picture where he was arrested for a DUI, but he has got a lot of mugshots. 
Look at his change of looks as well. Not going to speculate, but to me, the thinner, the heavier, looks like he might be using some drugs. And he looked good back in the day, but he looks like he's spacing out. He gained a little weight. He lost serious weight, gained some weight. And here he just looks like he's not even sure what planet he's on. So, yeah. And then we've got... This is winner number two and now we have winner number three this is Carla's nephew Christopher Roberts and police report for molesting a six-year-old girl in his home he was a cop at the time and the court case ended in a hung jury with his documents that I do want to go over. This is why, guys, there is going to be a part two, probably a part three, but this is definitely going to be continued. With that, guys, it is a wrap. I want to thank you all for coming in. And thank you for watching. Please like or dislike, whichever you prefer, and a subscribe. Everyone have a good day or a good night wherever you are in the world and stay vigilant. I am out.